Got a quick video for you here today. We're going to be going over the vacuum pump on the OM617. And so before we get into the deletion part of this, I just want to show you that you can actually clock this. Normally this nipple is pointed straight up. And if you get my power steering adapter bracket, that nipple will be pointed up into the part of the bracket. And so you can actually point it so that outlet's facing the passenger side. Now, if you're curious what this nipple I have going on here is, this is actually an aftermarket unit. I'll drop the link below, but it's a compression style fitting. It's got a 3 8 hose barb fitting. And you don't actually even have to buy this if you still have the parts off your car. This fitting is actually on the end of the hard line that uh, routes up to the the vinyl hose that goes to your brake booster. So if you still have your your hard line and everything attached, that fitting will be on the end. If you don't, I'll drop the link below so you can find that. So if clocking the pump doesn't work for you, then you might need to delete it. Another reason for deleting it might be because you just don't like the fact that when this vacuum pump fails, it could release a bunch of ball bearings into the engine which could cause catastrophic engine failure. I apologize for the background noise. There's 50 mile an hour wind here today and there's really no getting around the howling of the wind. So please bear with me. The other reason you might want to delete the vacuum pump is simply because you want the, the space up front for your swap um, to clear your radiator. And lastly, when you delete it, you have to obviously go to some other form of vacuum um, for your brakes unless you're running Hydro Boost. If you're running Hydro Boost off your power steering pump, then you don't have to run vacuum necessarily other than to shut the engine off, but you can do that electronically. Um, if you want to run electric vacuum, then there's a good Audi part number from Hella. I'll drop that in the description below. And basically with that pump, uh, enough people have tried it and said they had plenty of vacuum to run their brakes. And then obviously the little amount required to kill the injection pump. So you can run that electric pump in place of this, free up some horsepower, free up some space, makes for a lot easier belt routing. Also the peace of mind that this isn't ever going to explode and wipe your engine out. So to remove this, there are six Allen head screws. They take a five millimeter Allen bit to remove them. You want to take this off in a star pattern like you're removing a pressure plate off of a clutch because there's probably going to be pressure pushing on this. You don't want to crack the flange. Now for this video, this one's set on here loosely. So I just have two screws holding it on. Now if you're going to clock your pump after you try this video, keep in mind you can take a 27 millimeter socket wrench, put that on your crank bolt and rotate the engine and that will move this contour so that it's not pushing on the vacuum pump. That will take the pressure off the pump and that will let you seat the vacuum pump against the engine block without any resistance. Otherwise, you have to push to compress this, which is really hard, especially when you're trying to get your bolts started. It's not going to work out very well. You also run the risk of cracking this flange if you put too much pressure on one part of it. So with the pump removed, now we're going to clean up our mating surface on the block. Then clean it really well with some brake parts cleaner. Now supposedly this bolt that protrudes out, there's this washer underneath this bolt. You can take this washer out, put a, a normal thickness washer underneath it instead of this one which is like a half inch or three eighths thick. And just put a standard washer underneath this bolt. Make sure that bolt's not going to bottom out. Tighten it back down. 
but I believe that's only on the 79 and 80 models without the EGR. Everything else should be pretty standard and not require any modification. Now we will prep our vacuum delete. We've got our new gasket here. First thing I'm gonna do is take my pump cover, take a very light coat, skim coat of RTV. This isn't to really do all the sealing. This is just to fill in the little holes if there's any nicks or anything. Take your finger and flatten that down. It should be so little that when you tighten the cover, you do not see any RTV ooze out past the edge of the, the delete cap. It's just to fill in the really fine scratches. It also helps the gasket stay in place. So you got your skim coat on there. We'll lay our gasket over top here. Then I'm gonna put another very light skim coat on the other side of the gasket. Or you can apply the other skim coat to the, the engine block if you want. And then we'll finally start mounting this to the block. Get all your hardware started, tighten in a crisscross pattern. And anytime I'm dealing with RTV, I like to get it basically finger tight, let the RTV set up for about 15 minutes, and then I'll come back and do the final torquing. And as you can tell, I've painted this cover. It's all steel, so it's a good idea to paint it so it doesn't rust. And the mounting flange is quarter inch thick. The tubing wall thickness is eighth inch and the cover is eighth inch. So if you would like to weld an idler pulley or something on here for other accessories, it's plenty stout enough to do that. That's why I've made it out of such heavy steel instead of going really thin. So that's it for the OM617 vacuum delete. If you'd like to delete yours, check out the link below for the vacuum delete kit. Thanks for watching.